Brethren, pray the Lord, pray the Lord, God is good. Happy Easter, happy Easter. We come with the story of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the story that is at the center of our salvation. And so we thank God that we have come to this season, the season when our Lord Jesus Christ defeated the powers of death. And it is the reason why Christianity is a faith that withstands a faith that has endured generations and generations, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It gives us hope. It gives us victory. And we know it is because of the resurrection that we exist as Christians and we believe that time will come when we shall inherit the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, today we come with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been through the period of Lent and now we dived into Palm Sunday. And now this time it is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on the Sunday morning. The events were long. Many, many things happened to our Lord Jesus Christ. He was arrested. He was tortured. He was crucified. He was pierced. He was beaten. And he died. And after his death, listen, the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Rose, defeated the powers of death. And the reason why we smile, the reason why we jubilate, because our Lord Jesus Christ defeated the powers of death. In the gospel, according to Matthew chapter 28, the angel of the Lord came down, rolled the stone away, and he sat on it. And because he sat on it, Jesus Christ came out triumphantly. And so the reason why we exist. And so for the next episodes, we will be talking about Easter story, resurrection story. But this time, let us dive into the gospel according to Mark chapter 16. We're going to read four verses and then I'll give a few thoughts and we shall end there. Now, resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalena and Mary the mother of James and Salom bought spices so that they might come and anoint him, anoint Jesus Christ's body. Very early, very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Now verse 3, the Bible says, they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And verse 4, looking up, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away, although it was extremely large. And so we can pause here, but the resurrection story is bringing us the good news that from this particular portion of scripture, Jesus rose from the dead. And that is our assurance. And the first assurance that was given was given by the women. And so the resurrection story, we shall be talking a little bit more about it. But the story about the women emancipation, because they come to the limelight. They're the ones who come first to the tomb. And so the women, the resurrection story is the women's story. Their uh, encouragement is there for their mission and so that actually they are remain a people that evangelize others. And so besides, we are talking about the stone and these women go and wandering along the way. They had planned, one, they bought spices. They had planned, two, to carry the spices to take them anointed, the body of Jesus Christ. And so those two, they planned. And so they moved early in the morning to go and find where the body had been laid and they wanted to anoint the body. But the point that comes on this resurrection day, the women ask the question, as we go, but something that they didn't even plan for. The stone was so huge. The stone was so massive. The stone was so big. And so because they were women, and because the stone actually rolled to the entrance of the tomb was by a man. And the man was called Joseph of Arimathea. And some other scriptures mentioned Nicodemus also might have come in there. And so rolled to the entrance of the tomb. And now planned spices, planned the day of waking up, but didn't plan the obstacle 
the stone. Now here is the question, who will roll away the stone for us? Is the question. It remained challenging, but praise the Lord. In verse 3, the Bible says that as they wondered, the stone had already been rolled away. When you read Matthew chapter 28, we see the details of how it was done. One, it was big. Two, it had been sealed. Security guards had been put there to guard the entrance of the tomb. Because the story had circulated that actually Jesus might, Jesus' body might be stolen by his disciples. And so Matthew 28 gives us the details. Mark brings out the detail of the women going and wondering how they are going to find, how are they going to enter. We are mere women, but praise the Lord that the stone had been already been rolled away. And so friends, this resurrection story, you see, it, 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 it proved to them that nothing is impossible for God. It also proved it to them that salvation had come because Jesus had mentioned it and it is the center of our salvation. So the women find the stone rolled away and it's a message that brings hope in their anxiety, in their fear. They found the stone rolled away. And we shall continue you know, digging deeper into this story. But one thing that I want to leave with us today on this resurrection story because of the excitement, because of the joy that Jesus rose, and because of the salvation, because of the salvation that he brought, we remain praising the Lord and singing and jumping and saying yes, even in the midst of challenges. But still, the question is, who will roll away the strength for us? So it's the question that we need to think about and plan. In our life, we have massive stones, like we have read in this portion of scripture. So the resurrection story is the story of dealing with the stones in our life, of dealing with obstacles in our life. You know, the Jews, the Jewish leaders had thought that actually Jesus would remain there. And so the stone was rolled away by the angel, the power of God. And so even in our life, the challenges that we meet, the dilemmas, like these women met the dilemma along the way. By the way, importantly, they thought about it when they were on the way going. Importantly, they talked about it when they were going. And they just didn't sit down to lament. The message for you is, is there an obstacle? Is there any challenge? Is there any trial? Is there any temptation? Is there any obstacle? Now, the women give us an example. One, they were talking about it. So you need to talk about it. Have someone to share with to share with your story of the obstacle. Because when you bottled it up, it breaks you. The women talked about it. So on this resurrection day, I urge you and I urge myself to talk about it. Two, you talk about it, but not just sitting lazily there. You talk about it and doing something about it. That's a very huge lesson as well on this resurrection day. Now, these women, they were talking about it, but they were walking towards it, praise the Lord. And they were walking towards the stone. And so, it was an activity morning. Resurrection story is, an, is a story of activity. And so, for us who are Christian, and we believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is activity. We know that challenges come, and the lesson that we pick from here today is challenges will always be there. Massive stones will always be there. But talk about it, pray about it, share about it, and do something about it, walk towards that. We have challenges in our community. We have challenges in our society. We have issues that are challenging us, but when talking about it alone is not enough. We need to go um, full blast. We need to go head on with the challenges, and God will give us the grace. The stone was rolled away, and we pray that actually God will roll away the stones that we are finding in life. Recently, we had COVID. That was a huge stone. Who knew that actually we would be talking freely like this again? Because we kept tying our noses, and, you know, it was a huge stone for close to two years. And we thank God that he rolled away. I mean, Ebola has just come. And, you know, we have just been in it, and it was terrible. And very many other things, HIV AIDS has been there, and it's still a huge stone. Poverty is still a huge stone. You know, many, many things are huge stones in our life. Now, those that have, our young people that have graduated, that have read, and there are no jobs, that's a stone. 
those that have grown and they need marriage, they need a husband, they need a wife, that's a stone. You know, school fees, you know, uh, necessities of life, those are stones, huge, massive. But listen to me. The moment the women lift, lifted up their eyes, the stone had been rolled away. But the one thing is that they talked about it, they meditated about it, and they moved towards it. Now, we ask God to lead us all through. Now, allow God to do his part. But you also do your part. These women challenge us that on this resurrection day, they talked about it, but they walked towards it. Do your part, and God will do his part. And one other thing is, there may be obstacles ahead, but trust God and keep moving. Now, I leave with you this message. Keep moving. Don't, lamenting is there, talking about it is there, praying about it is there, but let us move. And try to use our effort. And God will bless the, hand, the work of our hands. And about anxiety, about worry, Matthew 6, 25 to 34, do not be anxious. Philippians 4, 6, 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, let your desires be made known unto God. Now, my brothers, God bless you. Happy Easter to you, Resurrection Day. And may God resurrect anything that was going to be buried. May God resurrect your hope. May God resurrect your you know, you know, the love that was growing cold. May God resurrect. And we shall keep talking about these things because the resurrection story is our central story for our salvation. May God bless you and keep you. I wish you a blessed season of celebration as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ because it's the center of our salvation. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.